Hey guys, what's up? I hope everyone's doing well and doing okay. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to build some things with Tailwind. And in particular, we're gonna take a look at how we build something like this. I'm gonna walk you through uh, step by step and give you kind of an iterative approach on how this process was made. You can replace the graphics. I just like this kind of tune style um, graphic, but you can replace this with something more meaningful, maybe a car here and maybe a sign or something or some food or whatever the thing may be. But it just goes to show you what, what you can build with Tailwind and how you can build, you know, web type components and layouts and stuff like that with this framework or just any other framework. It could be Bootstrap and stuff like that or whatever, but we're going to work with Tailwind for now. You know, out of the box, Tailwind does come with some kind of uh, responsive uh, functionality built in, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And I'm going to add a really quick way to do this with Emmet. So we're gonna walk through some Emmet things. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be building. And in the next video, I'm actually gonna build it and I'm gonna show you how it's done. All right, so with that, let's get started. Okay, so this is a great place to start. So we have a mock-up, you know, so this is a design that was maybe given to you or you're given direction or was handed to you uh, by another colleague or a teammate or you're working by yourself. So what this is, it just kind of, you know, very high level represents what it is you're trying to build. So we have a title, we have a paragraph, we have a couple buttons here, we have a small picture represented by this X, and then we have another large picture represented by this box and this X. So um, this is all great and you know, probably you're like, okay, this makes sense, I see how I'm gonna build this thing kind of, and you may start to proceed and approach and build it how you see fit. Now, there are some things and some nuances that are actually missing here, some things that you might have to plan and, you know, uh, think about and add that may not be added to the direction that you were given. Uh, and depending on the tool and the team you're working with, uh, this process varies, but I'm going to walk you through one flow and then you guys can uh, look at things a little bit differently and try to plan out your own approach and at least figure out how, you know, where you start and, and where you can start putting things together. If you see something that you like, or you want to replicate a design, or you want to create your own, or you've been given direction. So uh, this is great, and we're going to take a little bit deeper dive into what is kind of missing from this mock-up. So this is the next section to this uh, mock-up. And all I've done is I've just kind of laid everything out in kind of boxes. And at the end of the day, we're really putting things into containers, into boxes, and we're placing them into a page layout or a container or a section or something and we're laying the items that we need in boxes and then we're either styling them or moving them around so at the core it's the same as the initial mock-up that you've seen before so we have this image over here we have a large image over here in purple so both images are represented by this purple color and then we have like this blue container which is a container that contains this image and this image, but you would not have noticed that initially from the previous uh, mock-up. And then within that container, we have you know a section here, and I just call the section article because it's kind of like a little article, and it has some call to actions. It has your title, it has your paragraph, has some spacing, which you would not really have maybe accounted for in the previous diagram. And you have your buttons down here, so you have. Uh, two buttons, right? And it looks pretty safe as like, okay, this is your article. This is a small picture. Over here is a large picture. This whole thing in blue, it's called the card. And then I have these elements here. And then within this whole thing, you know, is this um, container that we have. So all this is placed in this container. So yet again, with our previous mock-up, you would not have actually maybe intuitively seen that you know, this whole mock-up is inside something, and it actually is. Um, you don't have to put it inside something. You could just, you know, go and try to lay it out. But, you know, when you take a modular approach to certain designs and trying to implementing certain things, you'll find that, you know, placing something in a container allows you to remove it, you know, easily. Or just think about the way you want to design and lay it out. I won't get too technical with it because there's a whole theory behind this whole box modeling and laying things out but I wanted to give you a, a closer insight to some of the things, some of the elements that you may have missed that you might not have noticed that were there. So now we have some extra information. We now know that this thing is in a container of some sort. We have these pictures here. We have this other container, which contains our article. And then we have this other thing containing the article and a bunch of other things. 
So uh, keep that in mind. I'm gonna take it one more level to another diagram and I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail. All right, so here's kind of the next evolution of the same diagram that we've seen previous. So we have that container again, but I've just added some code elements, some HTML, basically some syntactical elements that will help us lay out this, uh, you know, thing that we're trying to create. So we have a section. So that container that we had, you know, before in the previous diagram that we knew was not really relevant or we didn't see that it was visible is now this section. And then within that, we have a div container, which is just another HTML element wrapped in blue here that contains some other items. And within that div, we have a article container, which contains some elements. And these elements are here, an H1 for your title, a P tag for your paragraph. We have another div that contains these two buttons. So in the previous diagram, we did not see that there was a container containing these two buttons. We just assumed, okay, these are two buttons, right? You know, button A, button B. And then we denoted that these buttons are buttons, but they're actually different tags here. We've kind of made, um, you know, an assumption that they were both going to be kind of the same buttons, but they're not. This one's using the button tag, you know, one element. And over here, it looks like a button, but it's actually a styled up anchor tag, an A tag. So now we're getting a little bit more clarification on the details of what's inside of this article, inside of this box model set. And we also get a little bit more clarification around the images. We're like, okay, here's this small image and it's also contained within a container. So this image is inside of this container and over here, likewise, this image over here donated by this, you know, solid box here in purple is contained within this bounding box here, this div. So now we have a little bit more clarification on the initial mock-up that we had, which we probably intuitively didn't know, and now we have a better plan of kind of how to lay this out. Now, there's many approaches to doing this, but I'm gonna walk you through this one, and you guys can see your elements and your things and your objects you wanna create and your layouts, and you might start thinking along those lines, and then you get a better approach as to how things are put together. So I'm gonna do one more level, one more thing, Actually, I lie. I'm going to do a couple more because um, we're going to be using Emmet and I want to show you what the syntax that we're going to use is going to look like in relation to what we have have here currently laid out. And this will help you kind of become a little more proficient. You don't have to use the Emmet syntax. You don't have to do it this way. You could literally start coding and go, okay, I have a section right? And then inside that section, I have this container, which is a div. And inside that I have an article and then inside that article, so on and so forth. And you can keep going and doing it that route and you will get the same layout, but I'm kind of, I'm not lazy, I guess, maybe a little bit more proficient in the way I want to do this. And I want to be able to write maybe one line of code and, you know, get my layout based on my understanding of the way the thing I'm trying to create is laid out. I hope that makes sense. So let's just take another approach and look at this one more time from a different perspective. So here we are again at this next level of our mock-up, another iteration. And this we're trying to focus on is the Emmet syntax. So right here we have a section and then we have within that section we have a div and within that section we have one, two, three similar things three children of this parent div, and those elements are a div tag, another div tag, and then an article tag. Okay, so this is the syntax if I was to type out something fairly rudimentary and basic inside of Emmet, it would generate a scaffolding or a structure that would kind of make sense. But if we study our diagram over here and we look a little bit deeper, we'll see that there's also some other things that we could kind of add or another approach that we could take. We have the section area, and to us in our original diagram, this was kind of invisible. We didn't know this existed. So now we have this one section denoted by, you know, replicating it over here within the Emmet syntax. And then within that, we have another div, this child element of this parent container. And within that, we have something else. We have 
the article, which is represented by this article tag, right? That makes sense. And then within that, we have three siblings and they are denoted by this number three. There's one, two, three of them. And they are within this parent tag, this number two tag. So I know this might sound a little confusing, but I really want you guys to pay attention to this because it's going to hammer home when you start to look at other elements and other things. And it's going to make more sense even when we start building this. So we didn't know that, you know, within this image over here, the small one, there's a div container. This thing is contained within something else. This image has a parent container. Right, so we'll have to put that into effect when we look at this a little closer. And also over here, the same thing. We have a child element that has something else inside of it, another child element. This thing is actually a parent of this item, right? But this container, as we can see over here, are siblings of this container, this parent element. So it gets really nested and it gets a little confusing, but I want you guys to pay close attention to that. And the other thing that we didn't really kind of know was we had two button elements, right? And now these button elements are not quite buttons. This one is a button denoted by the tag here, but this one over here is an anchor tag and it's styled to look like a button. And that in itself has its own container. So these two things are contained within another div. So that goes to show us that we can make yet another iteration on this basic Emmet syntax to give us a more refined structure of the layout of the mockup that we're trying to build. So let's take a look at that. So here we are with a little bit more clarification around the actual nesting of these siblings and stuff like that. So once again, this is going to be very high level, but I'm going to walk you through this so you understand the process later when we're building. We have this section. Within that section, there's a div. Within that div, we have three child elements, right? Three things that are on the same level. And then those child elements have other elements inside them, other children. So this div has this image inside of it. Uh, this div has this image inside of it. This article has these three light pink things inside of them. It has the H1, the paragraph. It has this div container. And then yet again, within this div container, denoted by this purple icon, it has its own children or own child elements inside of it. So now that we know that, we can quickly guess, or not even guess, we can like really predict what this Emmet syntax is going to look like after we refined it. And here's what it looks like. So it looks like this. We have the section as we always originally intended to have this invisible boundary containing all of our content. And then within this, we have this div and there's that one, two, three, like sibling elements. Okay. These are all children of the first container number two. And then within those ones, we have their corresponding children. So this one has a child, this one has a child element, this one has one, two, three child, child elements, and then within that child element, it has two more. And I hope this makes sense, and I wanna really hammer home on this one. When you take a look at a mock-up or something you wanna design, and you're going to lay it out or create a way to create it, it's good to understand this type of process. And there's other processes beside this one to kind of help you, you know, clarify how things are going to be laid out. But uh, this approach will allow you to kind of like pick out anything that you see or anything that you're kind of working on and then kind of go, okay, I've got a plan. I know how to lay this out. I know what the basic elements and structure is, and I know how to start to, you know, put this thing together. And that becomes kind of priceless when you think about it, because once you understand this, you'll understand, you know, various things on how to lay out or structure or approach something with a decent plan. Now, once again, this is one of many types of approaches you could take, but I want you to understand how I took this approach and how we get to what we're going to get to in the next lesson. So um, do pay attention to that. And I would rather personally, me, myself, just type out this 
set of commands and generate the scaffolding or the structure I need, then kind of guessing and thinking, what is this and how does it work? And, you know, how would I lay this up? I can clearly see this based on, you know, what I've kind of planned out. Now, I won't do this for every single, you know, element or thing that we create with inside of, uh, you know, say Tailwind or Bootstrap or whatever. But I will do this for this initial video because moving forward, if you're watching me create things and you're wondering like, how did I come up with this? Or how is he doing this? Or this doesn't make sense to me. You can kind of get an idea of how I'm thinking and there'll be different approaches that I will do to different things. But this will help you understand that. And once you understand that, you may even come up with your own approach. As a matter of fact, before we get into the next video, perhaps now that you understand some of these things, you might be able to do this before I post my next video and lay it out and then compare what you've done to the results that I've done and see if you get relatively the same thing. So that's pretty much it for this kind of theory, guys, and understanding this. And uh, there's so many different approaches. Once again, I don't want you to be confused because once you understand something, then you can truly go ahead and, you know, manipulate it and modify it and make it your own and understand how things work when it doesn't work. Okay. So do keep that in mind uh, when we go forward to doing some of these things. Also, um, you know, you're not going to really go through this process like this in full detail, like how I laid it out for you, but this will be your thought pattern and this will be the way you think about things moving forward, or this will be one way of thinking about those things. And it does help. Um, this usually comes with experience. Um, it's not done right out of the gate, but you do have to understand that there is a process. And once you understand a process or have your own process, there really is nothing that you can't create. So once again, we went through all that and it was a lot. And for those of you who are not familiar with Emmet or HTML or Tailwind, it will make sense in the next video and it will make sense over the course of this channel. But just to hammer this home one last time, right here, we have our small image right over here. We have our big image and we know that big image is within the container. And we also know that the small image is within a container. We also know that this whole thing, this whole card, this whole layout is also in a container. And as you can see, this container has a background. It has an image inside of it, right? And then we know we have our key elements within that. We have our article, which is this section over here. We have our title. We have some paragraphs some some text. We have the two buttons. And also note that the final design is not always like the initial mock-up that you receive. There is some variation or some room for, you know, um, changes or discrepancies or whatever. So just also keep that in mind. Sometimes it won't be verbatim exactly what you get, and that's okay. So right here, we have our button, and we have some different things going on. The anchor link, which looks like a button or is like a link. And then over here we have the actual button that does something, some call to action. So now that you guys understand that, we're gonna take the time to flesh this out and we'll understand how this, this particular piece can be built with Tailwind. And it doesn't have to be Tailwind once again, but we are doing Tailwind stuff, but this process can be applied to many uh, CSS frameworks and things like that. So don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts below. Hit the notification bell. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Until next time.